So this is very interesting, or at least I think so. Um, we were looking before at the swag and changing the salts that were actually in there, and the papers that I was reading were talking about the size of the atoms involved. And it struck me that maybe it wasn't the size of the atoms, maybe it's to do with the charge that they actually carried. So what I've got here are three solutions. This is sodium chloride, this is magnesium chloride, and this is aluminium chloride, and the same molarity solutions at half molar. So in here, we've got the sodium with plus one, the magnesium with plus two, and the aluminium with plus three. Now, if I'm right about this, obviously what we should see is an increase in effect. Now, I've got the usual setup, but because it's a much smaller experiment, we're using a smaller swag plate. But it's done the same way. There's a piece of plastic with two copper strips glued onto the plastic, and then it's painted with the um, swag ink on the other side. This is just water just to clean everything off in between the two dipping sessions. So if I dip it in my sodium chloride, we should get a reading. And we do. We're getting about three. That incidentally is on a millivolts uh, reading because it's such a small size, obviously, and it's running through its 10 ohm resistor. So we're getting about three millivolts. And then we dip it into the magnesium. We're getting about four. So we get it up to about four. Give it a clean. Now if I dip it into the aluminium, we're getting up to six. There you go. So it looks like I'm right. It's to do with the amount of charge that the atom is actually carrying, not the size of the atom. So here we plus one, and we get one reading. Here plus two, the reading is higher. And here at plus three, we get the highest reading of the lot. So obviously, what we want to do is use a salt that carries a high charge. Now, that was all very interesting. But there's an even more interesting thing. If I just put my swag plate in there and leave it alone, you'll notice there's already a charge. Now with the others, I had to dip it in and out to get that charge. With this one, just dipping it in there is enough to generate a charge on that. So there we go, finally it settled down at about 1.5. Now, the immediate question is, where is that coming from? There's, it can't be anything. There are a couple of copper strips and some aluminium chloride. There's no replacement reactions going on because aluminium is higher in the electronegativity series. These bits aren't dipping in there. It's only the bit of carbon that's in there. The copper's acting as a current collector. So how come I'm getting a voltage across on a resistor of 1.5? It's pulling current. Um, one of the things that would occur to you, or would occur to me, because of other bits and pieces that I've done, is this is a temperature battery, in the same way that the carbon battery is. So the next thing, obviously, is to stick it on a um, heat pad and see what happens. So that's what we've got here. We've got a hot plate here. I'm going to plug it in, turn it on, and we'll see what happens when we get a bit of temperature in there. OK, this is impressive. Remember it was 1.5 and it was sitting there at room temperature and standard room temperature here at the moment is 23 degrees. I put it on the hot plate and we're getting a surface temperature here, 33 degrees. So having raised it at 33 degrees, you can see that it's now at 2.3. So it's um, shooting up, I would say. And what we've obviously got there is some kind of thermal battery. That's really very, very cool. So we're getting an increase in output by increasing the temperature of our half molar aluminium chloride solution. It's probably more noticeable here because of the aluminium carrying a, a positive three charge. So the next thing would be to see what movement will do. So I'm gonna turn this thing on, it gets a bit rattly. So we'll turn it on and see what happens. So as I turn it on, you'll see it increase. Turn it off, you should see it drop back down again. There you go. So, obviously, the higher the temperature, then the more charge we get. The faster the fluid flows across the plate, the more charge that we get. The surface temperature of the plate is currently 36 degrees. It's measuring 2.4. 
with the turned on flowing across, as you can see, it got up to 2.7, no problem at all. I find that fascinating because that is such a simple device. I mean, it is um, a piece of plastic painted with an ink. And okay, I'm putting hot water across it now, but nothing particularly excessive. In a solar situation, you can get those temperatures easily. But how about that? Isn't that fascinating?